So last week at the Inspire conference, the announcement of Microsoft 365 Copilot's pricing somewhat overshadowed a whole bunch of other things that are pretty interesting. One was the release of a new version of Bing Chat connected to your Microsoft 365 business or enterprise account called Bing Chat Enterprise. In this video, I'm going to take a look at Bing Chat Enterprise, compare it to the Bing Chat that we've come to know, and consider how it compares to other products that we might be looking out for, like Microsoft 365 Copilot, or even entirely different services like ChatGPT. By the time we finish, we'll know what advantages Bing Chat Enterprise offers, and which features you might be looking for that it doesn't and why you might want to start using it in your business. So what is Bing Chat and how is Bing Chat Enterprise distinct from it? Back when Microsoft released Bing Chat in February, it was pretty revolutionary, as it combined the power that we'd seen in ChatGPT and using OpenAI's GPT-4 model with access to the internet. Hey, thanks for watching. If you're enjoying this video and getting value from the content, please do drop it a like. And if you like to see content like this, then please subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon so you know the next time I release a video. Also, if you think this content might be useful to your network, please do consider sharing it there. Thanks. Over time, new features such as different response types and image generation have been added. And along the way, competitors brought online similar services such as Bard from Google or ChatGPT with web search enabled from OpenAI. One big problem existed with all of these services though. To get the best out of them, you had to give them a lot more context in the prompt than you would ever need to do for a normal Google search. And in a business setting, this might often include proprietary information or even customer data. And alongside this, none of these services, not Bing Chat, not ChatGPT, not Bard, made any commitments about data protection that would be sufficient for most businesses to be happy with that type of information being shared. And this is the reason for Bing Chat Enterprise. It's Bing Chat plus information protection guarantees to make using it okay for most business settings. So what are the actual data privacy differences between Bing Chat and Bing Chat Enterprise? First, I just want to state for the record, I'm not an attorney. So in reviewing Microsoft's terms for its products, I'm not providing any legal advice on them. If you have concerns about Microsoft's product terms or how it works with your data, please review the materials yourself and employ the services of a legal professional if you need that type of advice. With that out of the way, both Bing Chat and Bing Chat Enterprise direct you to two different documents from their start page, a privacy statement and a term statement. The privacy statement is actually exactly the same for both and does not include any specific reference to Bing Chat or Bing Chat Enterprise. However, the terms document is different, and I use Claude 2 to create a breakdown of the differences. So as you can see, there are some differences between the services, but the one that's really pertinent to us is to do with the ownership and protection of the information. And in the Bing Chat terms, it's stated by using the online services, posting, uploading, inputting, providing or submitting content, you are granting Microsoft, its affiliated companies and third party partners permission to use the captions, prompts, creations and related content in connection with the operation of its businesses, including without limitation all Microsoft services, including without limitation the license right rights to copy, distribute, transmit, publicly display, publicly perform, reproduce, edit, translate and reformat the captions, prompts, creations and other content you provide and the right to sublicense such rights to any supplier of the online services. This very important section is missing entirely from the Bing Chat Enterprise terms. And this is the most significant substantive difference between the two. So the question really is, in this AI space, is Bing Chat Enterprise the odd one out in protecting your content? Or is Bing Chat just less protecting of your personal information than the competition? If we take a look at OpenAI's privacy policy that applies to ChatGPT, we can see that it is broadly in line with Bing Chats in that it allows OpenAI to collect your content from using its services and then use that information to improve its services. 
It does not seem to provide the broad rights Microsoft asserts with Bing Chat to share your content publicly, but more selectively based on the use case. Additionally, OpenAI allows you to opt out of having your content used for model training, but it's important to know that this opt out does not seem to restrict OpenAI's ability to use your content in other ways laid out in its privacy statement. So in this case, even if you, you use ChatGPT with model training turned off, the protection of your data is not as strong as when using Bing Chat Enterprise. Comparing this to Anthropic's policies around using Claude, these seem to give a better default level of protection than ChatGPT's around using content for model training, but still they do not go as far as Microsoft's with Bing Chat Enterprise. So in the standard of data privacy, where Microsoft has sought to differentiate Bing Chat Enterprise from both Bing Chat and the other AI chat experiences now available, Microsoft is indeed justified to claim that it treats your data with greater protections that are more appropriate to business needs than any other service paid or free. So does this mean that you should switch from ChatGPT to using Bing Chat Enterprise? So there are no big capability differences between Bing Chat and Bing Chat Enterprise. Both are leveraging a version of OpenAI's GPT model hosted in Microsoft's Azure data centers and relying on the Bing Search Index for internet access. At this time, the recently announced visual search capability in Bing Chat is not available in Bing Chat Enterprise, but so far as I've seen, there's nothing to indicate that Microsoft doesn't intend these services to have feature parity in the long term. If you've tried Bing Chat and you've opted for ChatGPT instead, and you're not concerned about handing whatever data you've been using over to OpenAI, then there's nothing about Bing Chat Enterprise that's going to get you excited. But if you've been holding off on certain types of workloads because of data concerns, or your business has outlawed the use of ChatGPT or similar because of those data issues, then Bing Chat Enterprise might just be the answer. If you're a business IT admin and you have the base licenses for Bing Chat Enterprise, which is uh, Enterprise E3, E5, or Business Premium Business Standard, and you haven't yet established any policies for using or not using AI tools in your business, then I see no disadvantage in turning it on. It potentially alleviates a risk. It really requires no work to adopt other than turning it on and provides a user experience so similar to what your employees may already know that many likely wouldn't even notice the change. Will Microsoft 365 Copilot really be worth so much more than Bing Chat Enterprise? Now, I don't think it's coincidence that Bing Chat Enterprise got announced unexpectedly at the same time that Microsoft revealed the price of Microsoft 365 Copilot, and importantly, a price many of us thought would be much lower. By getting on the bandwagon with AI-powered search with Bing Chat, Microsoft, a predominantly enterprise-focused company, had opened the doors to a type of tool that could be the bane of enterprise data loss prevention and confidentiality efforts. It's not like ChatGPT wasn't out there first, but Microsoft is doing a lot to make the allure of AI part of the general public consciousness. But while doing it needs to be a company that for IT professionals maintains credibility as a good steward of data and an exemplar of good compliance practices. In releasing Bing Chat Enterprise for free to many of its Microsoft 365 customers and with a coming $5 a month offering to everyone else at a price that's accessible to pretty much anyone, it can continue to hype the value of AI while also maintaining its commitment to corporate data protection and selling a premium AI toolset in Microsoft 365 Copilot that scratches the artificial intelligence itch for those with the deepest pockets. This is a very small needle that Microsoft is trying to thread, and Bing Chat Enterprise is a big part of its messaging strategy while getting it done. But you shouldn't think that Bing Chat Enterprise is just Microsoft 365 Copilot on the cheap. It's definitely not. As I've been saying for months, the AI arms race is not about whether you're using GPT-4 or GPT-3.5 or some other model. The foundation model only offers one leg of the stool real transformative capabilities with AI rest on, and the more important one is actually access to data. Bing Chat Enterprise relies entirely on the end user to provide context for each prompt in exactly the same way as Bing Chat or ChatGPT or BARD. 
It's got no visibility into your files, your emails, your chats, your organizational context, the plan of your workday, or any of the other myriad things that are essential to providing real benefit without re-explaining from scratch each time. So when you make a request through Microsoft 365 Copilot, something very different will happen than making the same request from Bing Chat Enterprise. The Copilot Orchestrator will take a look at what you're asking for and use the Microsoft search index of your graph data, which includes all your emails, your chats, your documents, meeting transcripts, etc., to refine your prompt to add all the missing context the AI Foundation model might need to come up with a good answer. It then goes ahead and submits that prompt, and the Foundation model either responds with an answer or ask for more data that the orchestrator will provide. The AI model and the orchestrator might have a multi-step conversation about your request, refining what you need and getting more data all in the background before you see any response and all in the blink of an eye. With Bing Chat Enterprise, you can provide the context. If you have data from a document, you can certainly paste it in, you can submit content from your emails, you can do all that work yourself, but essentially it's a one and done kind of dialogue. Bing Chat Enterprise is like snail mail, and Microsoft 365 Copilot is like an instant message. Or more accurately for this analogy, Bing Chat Enterprise is like certified mail versus all the other services, in that your content is protected. But Microsoft 365 Copilot is like an end-to-end -end encrypted iMessage or WhatsApp message. Copilot has a sense of rapidity, ongoing context, and an ability to hold that context state that Bing Chat Enterprise and the range of similar services out there simply lack. So does $30 a month for Microsoft 365 Copilot make sense if you're getting Bing Chat Enterprise for free? It really depends on what you're looking for. Purely financially, if you have someone in an information worker role who's making around $50,000 a year, they only have to save about 15 minutes per week by using Copilot for it to entirely pay for itself in their time. For most office workers, just asking for a summary of a long email thread a couple of times each week would probably justify the cost. But the financial reality still exists that for a small business with 50 users on business premium tier, your commitment to Microsoft might increase from less than $15,000 per year to over $30,000 by deploying Microsoft 365 Copilot. I think Bing Chat Enterprise is an olive branch to every business that will choose not to deploy Microsoft 365 Copilot. It gives you the ability to put into the hands of your employees a useful tool that uses this modern AI technology everyone is talking about and truly has capabilities that can enhance the work of any information worker. It also provides your IT team with a route to give users AI tooling while maintaining core data compliance. However, only those with the lightest usage need would see an equivalent efficacy from Bing Chat Enterprise than from Microsoft 365 Copilot. Almost anyone who is attending meetings in Teams or receiving emails or creating documents or similar types of work would benefit from Microsoft 365 Copilot. The reality is, in most organizations, we'll probably see it being deployed to some, but not universally, based on the perceived differences in value of the work a particular role completes. Right now, Bing Chat Enterprise needs to be enabled in your tenant to use it. There's a link to the location of the page to do this down below, but from August 18th, this is going to become an opt-out service. What's Microsoft's rationale for this? The reason for doing so is to ensure that employees who access Bing Chat from Bing.com, Edge Sidebar, or Windows Copilot have the highest level of data protection. What's special about August 18th? Well, that's gonna be one month after the announcement of this service. But maybe this could also be an indicator of when we'll start to see Microsoft 365 Copilot availability. We'll have to wait and see. What do you think? Have you turned on Bing Chat Enterprise for your organization? Are you happy it's going to become an opt-out service next month? Leave me your thoughts down in the comments. I hope this video has added value for you. Thank you for watching and please check back here for the next one. Until the next video, bye bye.